you're watching Talking About. I'm John Griffith, and I have uh, a familiar face joining me. He seems to join me a, a lot of times in December, which I'm finding out through all these memories popping up online, you know, through social media. It's like your past yeah. just coming back, and it's wonderful. Mr. Justin Utley, I'm so happy to see you, even, even yeah, though virtually. Good to, good to be here virtually, I guess I should say. You're in Florida, right? I'm in Florida right now. Yeah, Can't you tell by the, by the winter scenery? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, of course. But uh, yeah, I'm writing this thing out in Miami. Mean, now that now that Zoom is a thing, I think uh, it's going to be more here than there. But we'll see what happens when, when things normalize, hopefully before the end of 21. Yeah, yeah. I, I went uh, to promote pretty hard the, the album that was released last year. And then COVID hit and all the gigs slowly started canceling, all the pride stuff, all the tours, all the speaking engagements. And it was, it's been really rough. I, I mean, it's not just missing out on seeing friends and family this year, but it's, it's missing out on that exchange of energy at the gigs and being able to meet people and mm -hmm. travel around. And so it's, it's been rough that way too, but um, I'm hoping this, this single will give a little bit of a silver lining to all that. So. Well, and the single is, is an original holiday single. Yep. And uh, all, is, all is bright. Uh, listen to it a few times, and I really like it. It's, it's, it's timeless, yet time-specific at the same time. Yeah. I feel like the mention of the quarantine at the beginning is pretty specific, but at the same time, I can see, you know, some of my friends that are up in Boston, when they get snowed in, they're pretty much quarantined, too. So I think it can apply to whenever whenever we're not able to go out <laughs> people that we love, so.
it's a holiday single and yeah, it's a, this is a very different holiday, but let's, let's go back. I'm going to ask you about three Christmases in your life. So sure. what, what's, what's your favorite childhood Christmas memory? Um, that would be when I got, we got an upright piano. Um, it was a, uh, a neighbor's of a neighbor of a neighbor who sold it to another neighbor. I mean, it was really old. It was, I think the patent for that piano was from the late 1800s. Okay. Um, it weighed probably a ton. <laughs> it was a really big upright piano. It was made in Chicago. Um, and uh, I was eight years old. And up until that point in my, um, in my piano lesson years, I was playing on a, on a little organ that had a, an, air, an air supply to it. So it was okay. kind of a, If you if I was to play something really quick, you wouldn't hear anything because the air would just be escaping out of the out of the pipes, and so you'd have to play and hold down the notes for for a pretty long time for the sound to come out. Okay, <laughs> that's that's what I first started playing on. And so when I finally got that piano, I remember taking to it and starting to listen to my mom and dad's uh, vinyl and listening to a lot of Billy Joel and the Beatles to try to figure out how they would percussively play the piano and pound pound some music out of it so that was that was a pretty awesome holiday i love i love that piano they still have it too it's in the garage <laughs> okay yeah every once in a while you head over and in normal oh, yeah. times, every once in a while you head over and, and play yeah and interestingly enough it's um it's slightly out of tune but it's in tune within itself so it doesn't have that really honky tonk sound to it that a lot of old pianos have. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember growing up and having that slightly out of tune, um, just just been playing on it for so long that you know, I had a, I could say I could have perfect pitch, but it was according to that piano only. <laughs> so you could go to that piano and hit a note and I could tell you what it was with my back turned, but if you were going to any other piano and do it, I wouldn't be able to tell you. <laughs> that's funny that's what you trained your ear on yeah oh yeah definitely <laughs> that's funny okay and as as an adult what's what's your what's what's your normal times christmas like oh my god well it's been interesting just because um well up until moving to utah to get married and then divorce and all that stuff um so christmases have been a little odd since then Okay. But before that, um, I loved, um, loved going to Rockefeller Center in New York, catching up with friends. And then even this year, as with any other year, I, I go to my brother's house for Christmas. Um, and he was living in Utah at the time I was living in New York. So I'd fly out to Utah to visit and visit my nieces and nephew. And then this year they moved to Seattle, and so I'm going to be going to Seattle to see them for Christmas. And so that's kind of oh. my tradition. Which is which was going to be my third question. So what's your what's your Christmas like this year with with COVID and quarantine and all that? I know you're doing the usual, but how is it going to be unusual? Um, well, we're not going to be going out and going anywhere in Seattle, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, their their whole family um, kind of had to face COVID early on in the pandemic. They they got it pretty bad um my sister-in-law in, in particular i think i think we believe she had double pneumonia because of it um they all came out of it okay um but that means that i'm going to be hunkering down with them for for christmas mm -hmm. and not really going anywhere which is fine um there's plenty to do and plenty to catch up on so i'm really excited about seeing my my family again for christmas that's good well i'm glad they came through it yeah yeah yes, I how's it I have a family member with it right now as we record this. So yeah, she's doing, she's stable and yeah, the, it's just, it feels like she says it feels like a bad cold. Oh yeah. Uh, and her oxygen levels are fine. So that's, that's encouraging. Yeah. My, um, my father and my stepmother both got it during Halloween and you know, things in Utah just aren't on the same level. The, the government want to tell people what to do for fear of mutiny. <laughs> mm. It's it's really frustrating because then it jeopardizes the health of everyone else. And as a result of Halloween, they both got it from handing out candy to kids. And it was just 
first off, why were they doing that in the first place? Um, but it's just about, you know, you can't, you know, you can't really tell people to ignore their holiday traditions here. It seems like there's just the, an attitude of government not telling you what to do type of a thing. But mm -hmm. again, and that jeopardizes the health of everyone else that wants to follow the rule also. <laughs> but they will, it was like a, they said it was like a really bad chest and head cold. Um, and my stepmother had a few other complications from it, but they're, but they're in the clear now, but it's something that they didn't really take seriously before, but now they take very seriously because it was a pretty big deal for them. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a hard lesson to learn and then they learned it the hard way, but they learned it and they're okay. Yeah. Yeah. Big picture. They're okay. Yes, exactly. And I, I went and got tested for the antibodies, hoping that I just had a mild case and just never knew. But I'm not lucky. I didn't get it. And <laughs> lucky that I didn't get it, but I'm yeah. lucky. <laughs> I wish I had it, and I just don't have to worry about it. But apparently, right. I gotta gotta keep the yeah. Last time, last time I went to my doctor, I, I had an antibody test also, and no antibodies. So, so I can't be careless. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Even more lockdown. Uh. Yeah, but that, that and that's okay. As a, there's there's hope on the horizon, and you know that we're 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 looking ahead, away from that which is and was 2020, and onto new things. And new things are really why we're chatting today. It's like the, your your holiday single "All Is Bright," um, which is also which is also a, a charity release. Also, it's like you're you're donating yeah. profits off of it, and we'll go into detail on that later. But um, what, what was the inspiration for put, putting together, not just this song, but that it's a Christmas song? So I've had the idea swimming in my head for a couple of years now. And um, once COVID hit and I found myself, you know, unable to travel to do gigs, no gigs. And I tried a couple of virtual gigs and it just isn't the same. It, mm -hmm. The energy change with the audience is just not there. You know, it's just, it's like, it's like watching a movie on your on your smartphone. It's yeah. just not this experience. Um, there's no popcorn. There's no people around watching it with you. You know, it, it's just a different a different time. And so, I thought it was good to to get this release done to give not you know a little bit of a silver lining at the end of the year, but also to keep my music kind of in circulation since I wasn't able to do any gigs this year to kind of keep things moving. Um, mm -hmm. Work another single that should be out um, in the spring of this year, of this coming year. Um, and then a couple of music videos that are already. So, okay. so yeah, just to kind of keep the, keep the ball rolling. And then, you know, if 2021 is, is favorable, then I'll be able to go out and do some gigs and, get back into the game so well, hopefully toward the second half of the year say so we'll we'll be able to be in the same room again yeah i know right that'd be nice yeah <laughs> very much so but um the the proceeds from the single are going toward uh homeless youth yes um so utah's in an interesting situation uh, they have a homeless youth problem and the way that the government decided to tackle it here the local government is to declare it illegal for a child to be homeless, thinking that that would just solve the problem. Um, yeah, what it, it created a worse problem because now, you know, people aren't able to offer up their homes and, and um, shelters to children because it's illegal for them to take shelter because they can't consider themselves homeless. And so the Youth Resource Center of Utah had to cut down its capacity. It can house, I believe, you know, four to 500 beds. Um, per night and they, they're restricted to 70 because again, it's illegal for a child to be homeless. And so therefore it can't be a, a homeless shelter. It can only just be a resource center. Okay. And to try to get the ball rolling on that to, to help these kids, I decided to have the proceeds from the pre-sale of the single go toward the Volunteers of America chapter that runs the, the, youth, the youth resource center here. Um, they did some polling some work and found that about 70, not sorry, sorry, not 70, about 43 to 44% of the youth um, identified LGBTQ at the center. Um, about 60% of them say that they've been bullied here in, in uh, Utah for being homeless. And 70% of them wish that they could just take a bus ticket somewhere else so they could at least have a chance to fit in. 
mm. uh, a really rough spot for these kids. And uh, I just wanted to try to make their holiday a little bit brighter by, by giving, by giving back to my community that way. Uh, that's, that's wonderful. And uh, yeah, is it's, it's that time of year. And I wish if I've always said that if everybody just did one day of volunteer work per year, it would do so, so much good in the world. And you're doing a lot more than that with this single alone. I mean, your um, actions and advocacy throughout your, your adult life have been remarkable. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's, 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 uh, it's rewarding in, in many ways. And then it, it's, it gets really frustrating in a lot of other ways. I wish I could do more. Um, and then, you know, I do what I can. Um, I just wish that there's some legislation they could put forward that would make it so we could help these kids a lot more than we are. Um, they're getting a new governor here who's um, still a conservative, but forward thinking, um, a lot younger. <laughs> He's not in his 70s, um, <laughs> which isn't a bad thing. It's not bad to be 70, but um, it's nice to have someone in office that that's um, not four decades away and uh, thinking, you know, trying to run things the way they were in 1940. So um, having someone at the helm of the state to maybe pay more attention to you is going to be, it's going to be really cool to see something move forward on it. And I'm definitely going to be pushing for it. That's wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that you're there to, to, to push for these things because you have, you have an ability to get noticed. And yeah, I know that if you really put your mind to it, it will, and hopefully by the right people. Thank you. I hope so too. <laughs> so, um, with this single, and um, would, can you give me a little tease about what's coming out in the spring? Okay. Yes. Um, there is a song called "Should've Known," and it's um, it's the lyrics um, basically. Should have known better than to make me wait, sitting in silence, planning my escape. Should have known better than to watch me burn, thinking I'm sinking, now I return. And it's a bit of a comeback, kind of a, you know, you kept me down, but now look at me now, type of a, type of a song. Um, wrote it uh, as I was going through some issues after the divorce, but also um, finished it during COVID. Bit of an homage to the fact that you, not even COVID can keep us down. Let's keep moving, let's keep going, you know, let's, let's break out of this and, and make something happen. Um, then the two music videos, one is already finished. It, it comes out January 13th. It's called Underneath My Skin and it's from the album Scars. Um, okay. It's a visual, um, visual take. The lyrics actually start crawling up my skin. Um, and uh, and it's, it's um, my mom said it sounds like, um, a bit of Alanis Morissette meets Adele, so. I wish you'd stop behaving like it's my heart that you were saving. You spark the kindling of desire. I keep on walking through the fire. Well, you never went the distance, took the path of least resistance. Kept on sending me a message on a sword with It's a pretty passionate song. Um, it's it's a it's a good breakup song. It's about not being able to be friends with whoever it was that uh, you separated from, um, and it being really difficult to move on. It's probably one of the most um, heartfelt songs I've written, um, as far as that goes. Okay. So. Well, I mean, the, the, the trend in your music has obviously following your life because there's so much of your heart and soul in what you do. It's like you, you know, you're, you're coming off and wrapping up the, the singles for, from the breakup album, essentially, yeah. which is how you described it to me. So I'm not... <laughs> well, and it's interesting to, to, to listen back on not just Scars, but a couple of the other albums ago and... It is, like you said, it is a journey through my own life. It's almost like my journal in a way, uh, looking back and, and realizing, oh my God, I was at this point when I wrote this and that makes total sense. And um, 
you know, just seeing where I was when I, when I wrote those songs is, is bringing some closure um, to things in my life as well as being really, really cathartic in, in writing them and putting them out there. So yeah, it's, it's definitely part and in part of my, my existence, I believe. So I used to keep a journal pretty, pretty frequently growing up. And then once I started doing music, I stopped writing in my journal. And so it kind of makes sense that that become, you know, that my music has now become my. And within the music are, are all these emotions that everybody has and everybody's dealt with at one point or another. So it's, it's in sync with, with the audience. At, at some level, you know, it's like there's so much identification because we're all human and we all feel these things, the highs, the lows, and everywhere in between. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I try to write specific enough that it addresses the emotion and the, the situation, but not so specific that it alienates the listener. So, like, if I were to write, like, Survivors, for instance, um, it's about, you know, breaking free of, of my years in conversion therapy well, I didn't mention conversion therapy in the song because obviously it would be a little, little too niche. <laughs> but um, you know, right about being able to escape and overcome and, and grow from something that was holding you back is is something I think everyone can relate to. Um, that song actually um, on Spotify just passed I think a hundred thousand listens, which is more than anything I've ever before. And it's just it's been really a really cool journey and, and interesting with streaming now because I when I did Runaway and back when we when I first got onto your show I, I think iTunes was the only digital platform um, and there yep, wasn't any streaming. One anyway. yeah and there wasn't any streaming and so if people wanted to listen to the song they'd have to buy it um, where now they just have to stream it and the and the the uh, kickback or the profitability margin is much, 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 much lower, <laughs> uh, which makes it more and more important for me to get out and, and meet my audience and do gigs. And so again, hopefully that, that happens in 2021 so I can put more music out there. Okay. Well, I mean, you mentioned that you're not fully comfortable doing digital performances, but I, I would watch. Oh, I'll leave it at that. I would watch. Thank you. And I, I would, I would definitely, yeah. You know, if you had a little Venmo tag in the in the lower left corner, I would definitely, yeah, you know, hit the tip jar. Thank you, thank you. Well, maybe I'll consider it then. <laughs> it's been, it, it just, I don't know. It just loses some of that. Um, like I said, that energy is just, it's different. Maybe I, should, I need to try it again just to, just to maybe do something because the previous two um, virtual concerts I did were multi-artist lineups. Um, and that's a little tricky to do because, you know, there's, there's the, um, the time zones issue. And then there's, you know, everywhere from drag queens to magicians to other, other performers that were on the lineup. And so it was just kind of a big hodgepodge of everybody. Mm -hmm. and so maybe put together something that's just specifically me to see how it does. And, and go from there but um just the energy was just a lot different in it um i don't know i'm just used to being able to connect in person you know and then do and do a meet and greet after and, and all that so maybe i can set up a virtual meet and greet after the show or something like that i don't know maybe i mean I, i've seen artists do a, a youtube live and they're actually between songs they're actually kind of commenting on the comments so maybe that's a little bit of the to and fro that you can get. But yeah, I know how much you, know, you put your energy out there and then the audience gives it back to you tenfold. And that back and forth is, is definitely something that I, I understand thriving on. But yeah, we have to adapt to the world that we're in for a little while. Yeah, I know. <laughs> maybe I can adjust. I'm sure you can. <laughs> Uh, for for all that you do for the community, especially with this with uh, the Christmas song "All Is Bright," uh, uh, which is out there on just about every platform right now. Yep, yep. And uh, I definitely hope the audience you know, takes a listen, makes a request, streams it, buys it if if you still buy anything. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but it, I've added it to to my two Christmas playlists, so so you're in there. Thank you so much. It's, it's a fun song. It's really, it's, it's bouncy. It's, it's like a Mumford and Sons meets Lumineers meets Justin. It's a, 
it's it's different than anything I put out. It's a little more folk rock, so it's kind of going back to some of my roots. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also kind of forward in some of the in some of the chorus um, licks. So I, I really enjoy it. I listen to it a lot too. So <laughs> yeah. was it when I when I when I give it the first listen? It's like a, it's like a, okay, is is he going country with this? And then it makes a, and then it makes a left turn to a little more of what I'm used to from you. And, yeah. and it, it, it catches you. It really does. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got a couple of really good hooks and they're in a couple of different genres. And so it was kind of fun to mix those things together and see what happens. So, and you did it well. So and I'm, I'm grateful for the song. I'm grateful for all the good that you do. Thank you. And thank I'm, you. Hopeful, I'm hopeful that we can be in the same room sometime in 21. I, I hope so too. I'm, I'm looking at um, relocating again, and you know, New York's always been on my radar to come back to. So most of my music stuff is still there. The musicians I work with are all out there. Um, so it makes sense to to be on the East Coast again. So regardless, I'll be I'll be in your studio regardless of where I'm at. But uh, it might be a little easier to hop hop the train to Queens than to have to fly in. This is true because yeah, I remember the last couple of times we, we had a little difficulty coordinating it, but right now we're getting it done. So that's what matters most is, is getting it done. Yep, that is. So thank you again. Um, I hope we can have another chat like this in the spring. And <laughs> socially, you know, you can call me or text me anytime, but that's a whole different story. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really grateful that you took the time and I'm grateful for you. Absolutely. You too, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you've been watching Talking About uh, more of us in previous shows at talkingabout.info, uh, more about Justin at justinutley.com and look him up on YouTube, look him up on social media and he's out there and we're right here and we will see you next time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Right that's, the, that's the recording. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's good to see you again. It's good to